Thank you, Sherry, for wrangling all of us in this. Uh, thank you all for coming. Um, and thanks to The Loft for having this incredible program that I've been trying to get into for so long and am finally in. And this feels like a really important and incredible thing. So thank you for being here. Um, as Sherry said, I'm working on a collection of poems right now. Um, it's called Feathermucker. Uh, and it's less a sequence of poems and more a space that the poems occupy. So all of the poems that I'm uh, going to be reading tonight are from this manuscript. Uh, they are called, uh, the poems are called Feathermucker, Weatherlurker, or Heatherwalker. Uh, and I'll note those uh, as I get to them. Uh, with the exception of this first poem, which is called When Acting as a Particle. There is a giant curled in the belly of the earth and another giant curled around the first. And in the heart of the inner giant are a man, a woman, and a small bird. The bird is in the hands of the woman. The woman holds her hands out to the man. The woman asks if the bird in her hands is alive or dead. The man doesn't know. The giants know but cannot say. The giants hope the man stays silent. But the man says the bird is alive the woman, saddened, breaks the bird's neck. The giants roll over in pain. This one is a feather mucker. You said if you need something to bite, here is my hand, my fingers, my wrist. I bit down hard. When your skin split, I choked. You bled feathers. They tumbled out like dice. A bet I lost, filling my lungs, filling my mouth. I couldn't spit fast enough. I bit my tongue and cheeks, bleeding now myself, sucking muck into the swamp of my throat, dark mud all thick and grit. You moved to pull fistfuls of feathers from my mouth. Hopeless. You still bled. Feathers flowing from your wounded hand. I panicked. I clamped my jaw shut. You said, open up, motherfucker, open up. This one is a Heather Walker. It's subtitled Abed in memory of Mike Guzik. A feather lifted, birdless by the breeze, landed at our feet in the silence of morning. You picked it up. I thought about what eulogies miss the minute sensory experience, the second-by-second second adjustments we make as we move, the unsought, the unthinkable. Eulogies miss that bodily triumph in favor of hollow I am's and easy rhymes. Any lessons we learn from death are found in how we interpret the signs. We followed our shadows across the prairie, watching them peer over the horizon to catch a glimpse of stars in the lingering darkness you laughed as you brushed the feathers across your eye. You said, look at our bodies, our blood and bones and flesh. You said, the science of us, the movement of us. I thought, who are you to talk of bodies, you bodiless? I knew you felt nothing that I could feel. The warmth of sun bursting through the clouds like song, the sticky heat of a storm brewing. Thunder's bass rumble. I knew your spirit felt none of that. Too busy in the sinless and clean afterlife you chose. You raised your hand. You let the feather go. This is a weather lurker. My whole body is made of three layers of seamless rubber, a nylon cotton skin, asbestos, smoke, broken chain link fencing and acid free paper. One cylindrical hollow in my torso filled with teeth and stones, garbage in, garbage out. My maw churning blindly forward. I cast detritus aside, cluster bombs, torn pages, shrapnel. Choice? What choice? I am pulled along, flopping from one square of hard dirt to the next, my gristle sticking to the bent frame of my skeleton, every one of my dimensions faltering in this heat. 
magnesium, sulfur, and nitrates burning, the smell of asphalt melting. I am three parts, all natural, self-repelling, recycled from one city to the next, all these miles of hell. I can't wait until winter when I'll wear wool and flannel, the leather of my boots churning ice into mud. This is also a weather lurker uh, based on a mouse infestation at my last apartment. <laughs> we let our home go to the mice, gave up defending our cabinets against their assault. They took the space under the sink first. Like a coup in the kitchen, they gathered and won our utensils for their skittish cause. The counters were next, leaving us without bread or rice. The refrigerator and stove, it didn't take long to starve us. When they came to take the living and dining rooms, we yielded easily, fortified ourselves in the bedroom for a time, but the siege ended when they chewed the sheets. We surrendered into their nests of down and sawdust and fell asleep. When we woke, the house was ours again, but we lived in the walls. This is a Heather Walker. I think I'm going to read this one twice because it's a bit scattered. A feather against the blue of sky, a mark on faded paper, a rift yawns beneath its own punctuation, space tucked inside a sky, terrain folded among itself like a book on a shelf, a union of ink, the feather turns, mirrored, Daylight on a dark page, what a door finds in its own opening. A feather against the blue of sky, a mark on faded paper, a rift yawns beneath its own punctuation, space tucked inside a sky, terrain folded among itself like a book on a shelf, a union of ink, the feather turns, mirrored, Daylight on a dark page, what a door finds in its own opening. Weather lurker. Over a clear horizon there appeared a column of smoke, strange and violent, the landscape aflame with flowers, breathing like a giant, ghostly plume filling the sky above the plains, its soot rising from a crater several yards across. Grasses lean toward the hole and what lay at its center. A nest woven of twigs and eider down, compressed into stone. Curled in its heart, a bird and a mouse, scorched into a labyrinth of bone. Heather Walker. One day we will arrive at the place where knowing knows no bounds. We will cast off our masks and sing about our knowing until knowing itself becomes knowing. Opens wide its knowing eyes and says, I know you from before you knew me, and I know you better than you can know. <coughs> when we arrive, we will cast aside our longing, knowing longing is simply unknowing, folded over on itself and stretched thin. We will be content in knowing only the songs we brought with us, only the things we could fit in our fragile hands, our small heads. I'll end with this one. This one is called, When Acting is a Wave. There is a giant curled in the belly of the earth and another giant curled around the first. And in the heart of the inner giant are a man, a woman, and a small bird. The bird is in the hands of the woman. The woman holds her hands out to the man. The woman asks if the bird in her hands is alive or dead. The man doesn't know. The giants know, but cannot say. The giants hope the man stays silent. But the man says, the bird is dead. The woman releases the bird. The giants reach out to catch the bird, but miss. Thank you.